Still two minutes. Good on you, buddy. One more. I just want you to get that start line. Start line just get you down to the corral. Even if you don't start, let's get there. Yeah, Come, to on. Get there. Come on, buddy. Just take one step. One step over that start line. Just take one step over that start line. One step over that start line. Just any day of the week, you say run 6.7 k's in an hour. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Lap 40. I just wasn't prepared to be going that far. When I finished birdies and I got to 39 hours and you, you can see in the video I was, couldn't do another step and, and in that moment that's exactly how I felt. But then you always think back on it and you always think maybe I could have done another lap. Sean put the results up and next to my name said assist and I'm like what the hell does assist mean? Does that mean like I got assistance, like like a DNF or something? But so Sean's like, no, you assisted Michael to get to the 40 hours that he got to. For me, that was just getting second place, and I was stoked with that because that was way beyond my initial expectations. But at the same time, I was like, I was so close to, you know, if I if I could hang on a little bit longer, but it's like with these events, you don't know how much longer you need to hang on for. With birdies, I knew I could get to 24 hours. I'm not probably planned for 24 hours. In my head, I was like, I will keep going, but I hadn't expected to go to 39. And so I hadn't prepared for 39 hours. This one, I wanted to be better prepared. I didn't want to like, you know, plan to 39 hours because that was my PB and then, you know, just hang on from there. So I was looking at what's been done before. So Australian record, let's put that down as one of the milestones. And then, you know, where can we go from there? World record, are we going to get to the world record? I don't know if it's realistic to, to aim for that or not. So I put my plan up to 75 hours. That 75 hours had taken me three lines onto a new page. So I filled the page up, it went to 96 hours. I'm like, well, that's good. I'll, I'll come into this over prepared. So everything that I can control, what food I'm eating, what pace I'm running at, what shoes I'm gonna wear, all of that, I've got it all planned out. I've got contingencies for everything. Ones as well. yep. These are already hard boiled. I kind of see it a bit like the beep test. Like the beep test is designed that you're going to fail at some point before. Same sort of idea, like 96 hours, it just seems ridiculous to get to there. You keep playing where you shouldn't be playing. 
go out there and see how far you actually really can go. You know, and then at the end I don't really know what I want, but it's like I just I just want to be better really. Like I I did really well at birdies and I just want to go to that next level. Like I've seen what's possible with the people that have got the Australian record and the world record. I've had that experience of what I can do and you now I just want to see how far my mind can go. Just keep running. Time out or bust. I find no luck in wishing well. This world I'm on ain't no so way to beat the struggle. There's a price to pay. It started when I discovered park runs, just this free 5k run every week. I was an alright runner. I was still doing around the 20 minutes for 5k, but I wanted to get better. And I'm like, if I do like 5k's every day, then surely I'll get better at it over time. I started off with 5k's, I was like, well, how fast can I do 5k's? And I just wanted to like push myself there. And then it's like, well, I can do 5k's, let's do 10k's. You know, work your way up to marathon. It's like, well, how quick can I do a marathon? And then it's just that doesn't satisfy you anymore. Like marathon is like 42k's, it's a big distance for a lot of people. But for me, I just want to keep pushing further. And it's these sort of events where you can push yourself to those limits. You can't just, you know, go and run. There's not many, you know, 260k races you can sign up for. But if you can do 39 laps at a backyard ultra, then that's 260k's. And if you still feel like you can keep going, then, you know, the sky's the limit with how far you can do that. Okay, so we're doing at a one to five mood. Started at a four and we're keeping it at a four at the moment. When you're going into these big races, you can't do it alone. You need to have that support. What we found at Birdie to Gemma was very good, but it, it's a big job for her to do on her own. So yeah, now going into Herdies, I've got a bit more of a team behind me. Ready for your rice? Yeah. Normally it's me sitting in that chair and this is the first time that I've actually had to crew. <laughs> he's doing exceptionally well actually, so you know, he's trained me well and I've trained him well now, so. <laughs> So I think running itself is, is a solo activity, like you're out there, you're the one doing all the laps. But they're like your pit crew. So you come in from a lap, they get you what you need, they're giving you that moral support, and then, yeah, you get back out there and do another lap. It was just pretty much going through the motions. Like my first major milestone was 39 hours, so that was, that was my PB from uh, birdies. And it was just about just ticking through the laps just to get up to that first major milestone. And then for me, that's when the work would start. So I guess that first 39 hours you can see is like a warm up or, or something. Um, I don't know if you put that in, that might put a lot of people off. Yeah, made it through the night, so. You did a great job. Should get easier now with the sun up. Yeah. I was by myself a lot and I just had audio books. I can't remember the author's name, but uh, uh, what I talk about when I talk about running, um, but yeah, it's about doing triathlons now as well. So when he started talking about triathlons, I <laughs> tuned out a little bit.
Oh yeah, I'm nearly done. One more, one more lap, eh? Uh, a little bit, a tiny bit down. We'll get some more food into him. But yeah, the sun's starting to become, it's going to become an issue pretty soon. So we're trying to stay on top of just keeping him cool. He'll be fine. He'll go up and down, up and down like a roller coaster the whole time. So I just got to stay positive. I'll win when he's not here, but then as soon as he comes in, game face and I'm all positive and happy again. What I'm doing at Herdies is based on what works for me at Birdies and how I was feeling at Birdies. So to try and gauge how I'm going in Herdies, the only reference point I've got is how I was going at that point in Birdies. The biggest difference is this started at four. So like now, this would have been 24 hours at Birdies and I, like the distance isn't a big problem. It's more the, yeah. I've, I've still gone the same amount of time without sleep because I couldn't sleep Friday during the day. So. It feels like I should have done 24 hours by now, but I'm only at 18. I'm not thinking about what lap I'm on, I'm thinking about what time I'm at. So at 10 o'clock at Birdies, how was I feeling? Is that? About the same that I was at the 24 hour point. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a little bit better. Stop thinking about that and just And this is hotter as well. Righto, mofos, you're up to lap 20. Potentially even lap 19. <laughs> 19, definitely not. What did, what did, what did I do? This is 100% the last one. It's more, it's more than I can take. The heat just like really got to me and I was using strategy of running in the sun and walking in the shade and then, you know, I'd come in at the end of my lap and my crew would have my ice vest and cold water and have an umbrella. Sorry, ma'am. I'm totally spaced out. I'm I just gotta let you know. Every time you're close, you're pushing me. Yeah, you're pushing me. Mentally, I'm still good. It's just physically, I'm starting to feel like I'm breaking. There was a few laps where I was starting to feel a bit down on myself and just running and talking with Margie and she was like super positive. It's like, you're looking real good, Phil, like, you know, you've got this. And it's just that sort of encouragement from the other runners that, you know, keeps you going. Birdies, I, I felt like it was me versus Hooker. It wasn't about how far you can get, it was just like, the winner's that person who can last the longest. Yeah, repeat it. For Herdies, it was different. Don't you, don't you Margie was sort of saying, you know, what's my goal? And I just said, well, you know, between all of us, I said, you know, the Australian record needs to be all of our goal. Herdies was more like, how far can we get together? The more people you've still got going, makes it easier to push. I mean, I'd ideally like at least 31. And if I can keep going and help them get there, that's, that would be awesome. If you've all got that common goal in mind, it's not like, not so, well it is competitive, but it's, that's not what it's about. Big Kev has been entertaining me, he saved me from a frog. What, what type of frog was it, Big Kev? The, uh, mighty elephant eating frog of Herdsman Lake. With fangs. Which is why you never see an elephant at Herdsman Lake because the frog eats them all. And it nearly took Marjorie's right leg off. Kev saved me. So if she does get any records, <laughs> any record is that. He's a hero. Yeah, you're pushing me. The Australian record and then the 200 mile club. That that was somewhere that I wanted to get to, but I didn't want to stop there. I just wanted to to keep going beyond that as well. Machine. And I said, no, you can't have a washing machine. <laughs> 
That's ridiculous, sorry. If you're planning for an unlimited amount of time that you could be running for, you can't just you take an unlimited amount of clothing. So if you take a washing machine, then you're not limited by your clothing. You've got that chance to, to wash it and you can just keep reusing the same clothes over and over. This thing, like when you put on clean clothes, like you feel fresh, almost as good as having a shower, not quite. Well, I have to. <laughs> Get stuck here. It's just happened so gradually. Just sort of thought, yeah, I'll help him out. I didn't understand what I was signing up to. Oh, yeah. Every time it's just got longer and longer. It started out at 12 hours. I was like, 12 hours seems like a really long time. And at the time it was 12 hours, it was like forever. Afterwards, I was exhausted, but I was also just like, it just gives you this buzz. Just seeing people do things that I would like to do, and I don't know, just being able to celebrate with them. It's how ecstatic they are. I don't know. I like it. <laughs>I didn't know until the end of that lap, but I saw Margie standing like just at that last corner before the finish. And she just said to me, you've got this feel, hookers out. Good job. <laughs> Couldn't keep going, man. My guts was just playing up for too long. People always thought it was gonna be me and Hooker at the end, like going for the Australian record together. I only rated a four. I don't know. <laughs> I thought he'd be more excited when he crossed the line, but no, he's still got his game face on, which is good. You're amazing, man. It might be. No, no, no. Trust me, it's an amazing moment. When Hooker dropped out, it was like, you know, the reins have been passed to Kev. What's your name, mate? Kevin. Kevin. Kevin Matthews, I'm pleased to have the opportunity. You should have walked away a long time ago. <laughs> Are you going for the record? No! <laughs> I talked with him and his goal was 36 hours. So for me, I had like a range of emotions go through my head. First of all, I was ecstatic that oh, I'm in with a really good chance to last one standing now. But also at the same time, I was like bummed because like, well, I had all these ambitions for getting to the Australian record and beyond and that seems unlikely now. <sighs> also just like a sense of relief, like this, this could be over soon. This one has been vastly different to birdies because when I, once I got to the daytime, it was great and I was, I was doing really well. But the daytime on this one, it was so hot. I just wanted the night to come back around. Now that the night's here, I'm like, I need the day to come around. Nice, wow. Let's go. Thank you, thank you. So everyone, these guys are just about to set a new WA record for Backyard Ultras. Five off the Australian record after this. The last one standing can only go as far as that second person pushes him.
we'd chat as we go around and uh, and Kev would be like, oh, that's it, this is my last lap. Like, I'm sorry, I, I can't go anymore for you. And I was kind of like in two minds, like I wanted to kind of push him to to keep trying and even not just for me to get me to my milestones, but for him to, to push and find his limits. But then at the same time I was like, he's done man, like I feel bad, like keep pushing him, like he clearly wants to stop, but they're not letting him. Thank you very much. Lap 45, when he had told me on multiple laps that nah, that's it, I'm done, and I genuinely believe it, he was, he was telling me. Do you think really that one lap over I the... thought he was destroyed at that one? I think you lose when, you, when your mind gives up, when your mind says, no, I'm done. But as long as mentally you want to keep going, you're just going to keep being able to push your body to, to new limits. It's good. Is that the water he's taking out? I just, I just didn't want to give up at any point. I didn't want to just say, no, I can't do this lap. So if there's two people left and, and the other person is saying, I'll do one more lap in my head, I'm saying, well, I'm doing two more laps. He was looking pretty bad from like around the 40 hour mark, but it wasn't like he'd got worse. He's still at that same point. I'm like, well, if he's done five hours at that at that level, like he can do it another five hours. Well done, champ. You're more than halfway to the world record, Phil. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to share a little something with you from some people that we sent me some messages. Yeah. While you walk, Ken. Right. No, that was when I made the switch, like, as long as he finishes the lap, he's going to be starting the next one. So I've got to start thinking long term again. Okay. When you're ready. You've got time. That lap, it just felt like longer than that. Like, I got to like towards the end and I'm like, I don't know if I've bloody been on this course for this hour. Like. I didn't really uh, have an appreciation for the role of the assist at birdies. For me, I was just in it for myself. Like I wanted to push myself as far as I could go. At Hurdies, Kev was happy with where he got to. It wasn't for himself. It was to help me get to my milestones and for Sean and all of Ultra Series WA to like share in this experience but I'm grateful for that because that meant that I could keep going.
I might have not found my limits, but I went as far as I could go because that assist had dropped out. So that, that decision had been taken out of the process for me. I don't, I don't have any of that regret at the back of my head saying, oh, I should have gone out and done another one. It's like I'd, I'd done everything I could do at that race. I'd done a lot more than what I was going to do if, if Kev had dropped out. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not left wondering at the end, could I, have, could I have done another lap? Because I know in my head, yes, I could have gone another lap. I'm, I'm more wondering now how many more laps could I have gone. Gonna walk all over.